So today we're going to talk about quite possibly one of my favorite plants. Now this little cutie right next to me is commonly known as the Pilea glauca. The scientific name isn't really a definite from what I have researched and I've been searching a lot it has not been officially named but more than likely the scientific name is starting to be known as Pilea libanensis however this has not been officially named people call it Pilea glauca because of a botanist that had worked with the plant was describing its leaves so people pretty much know it as that but some of the characteristics of this plant is that it is a tropical plant obviously native to many subtropic areas and does love the tropical weather environment. It does have very silvery leaves that have a glittery or shine to them when getting a lot of light and can be quite striking when you see it in person. It's not always a favorite amongst many houseplant collectors because it can be rather messy. Oftentimes when the plant isn't getting ideal care it tends to drop its leaves and as you can see with such tiny little leaves it can possibly leave a little mess in your home. As far as care is concerned it does love very bright light and can tolerate one or two hours of direct sun if it's not too intense. So if you're along the equator you might want to avoid direct sun but maybe along polars you probably could tolerate a little bit more in off seasons such as spring and fall and winter. But in the summertime, I would definitely shy away from direct sun and then keeping it in a just very bright spot along a window would be wonderful. I keep mine in a south facing window, but I have it semi elevated. So when the sunlight comes in, it's just barely grazing the bottom of the plant and not really affecting too much of the top. Um, but it does get overall bright light, so it's able to keep its very full nature. Now when I've looked up different care tips or instructions on this plant, I've seen slight discrepancies or variations on the watering of it. Some people have said to keep it very evenly moist. I've seen some descriptions say to let it dry out in between waterings. I've seen where you let it dry out just on the top inch or two of soil but to keep the rest of it moist. And I think because of the variety of advice that's out there, it would very greatly depend on your potting medium and the living conditions it's in. And I think the watering is probably the trickiest part of this plant because of the delicate nature of the leaves. If you have too much water, you will rot your plant. If you have too little, you will get a lot of leaf drop. So finding a delicate balance will really vary depending on the conditions that you give it. Now, as I described earlier, I have mine in a south facing window. So getting that bright and direct light, it does need a little bit more water. Uh, so I do water this rather frequently and I do keep it rather moist. But I think if you have it in a darker spot or a spot where it's not getting consistent light, you would probably cut back on the watering just a little bit and allow it to dry out slightly to ensure that you're not letting it sit in water for too long. I do think that it's crucial to ensure that your soil medium is very well draining. If you know you're not going to water it very frequently, you could probably tolerate a more peatier or heavier mix that would retain more. But if you know you're a heavy waterer, definitely err on something on the much more draining side, whether that be a cactus mix or added perlite to aid in aeration. I also might suggest that because it is a little bit more sensitive when it comes to watering to use a filtered water or distilled water for it as well. If you use a tap water, you might want to check and make sure that it doesn't have too many salts or minerals in it that could potentially damage your plant. Um, it's probably not as delicate as say a calathea might be when it comes to the water, but if you want to be more cautious, I would probably ensure that you're using a very clean water. Now, as far as fertilizing and feeding goes, it's not a very heavy feeder, but it does require some fertilization during very active growing months. Uh, as with any fertilizer, I usually recommend a plant food that is very even, even nitrogen, phosphorus, and 
potassium or you could potentially have an NPK that might be more on the nitrogen side but definitely something that could be diluted or an organic fertilizer so that the delicate root system can soak it up naturally and easily without it being too damaging to the plant. Now this plant does love humidity although it's not an absolute deal breaker for it. So if you have average household conditions when it comes to temperature and humidity, humidity, <laughs> here I go again. If you have average household conditions when it comes to temperature and humidity, this plant will do just fine. Any extremes might cause some stress to the plant, but if you have a 50 to 60 degree percent humidity that would be ideal for it although it does tolerate less it's not very cold tolerant so you would want to make sure that you have it in a relatively warm room if you have too hot of a room you would probably have to ensure that it's getting a lot of ventilation so that it's not causing any kind of droop but uh, considering it's a tropic plant it can definitely tolerate the higher heat now these do flower, although I have not seen mine flower at all. I couldn't really tell you too much as far as getting the plant to flower, but I hear it does have very beautiful little blooms. So if you want to maintain a very full plant like this one here, you would definitely want to encourage it by pruning. So as you have new growth that are growing out the sides or the bottom, if it, you want it to trail, then you can allow it to trail. But if you would like a more full plant, then you would definitely want to cut it back to encourage more inner growth. Or growth along the base of the plant. Uh, typically with propagation, the easiest way is to cut stems and to either water propagate or I have also tried propagating in sphagnum moss and have had very good success with that. Typically you will have the new roots grow along nodes. Uh, so you could easily do the butterfly method like you would with a string of hearts by cutting each node apart and placing in sphagnum moss or you can cut an entire string, leave off some of the bottom leaves, and stick the whole thing into water. But as far as repotting is concerned, it really can handle a very snug pot, so you probably won't have to repot it very frequently, but if you do see signs of roots growing out the bottom or any kind of very strong root bound issues, then you would want to upsize by maybe just one or two inches. Now, I personally have not experienced any pest pressures with this plant, although it's probably susceptible to the most generic house plant pests. Prevention with would probably be key. You could use a neem oil spray or something to deter pests, but being that they do have a very small leaf structure and can be very can be rather delicate, you would definitely want to ensure that you're keeping it quarantined from other plants or inspecting it very closely before you bring it into your home. And from what I have seen too, this is a non-toxic plant, so it would be very safe to have around your pets and uh, other humans. <laughs> but all in all, this is definitely one of my favorite plants. And I think it's hard for any houseplant collector to say that they have a favorite and I don't think I could say I have any one favorite, but this one's pretty up there. <laughs> but if you have any experience with this plant or if you have any questions, tips, or anything else you'd like to share, just go ahead and drop them below in the comments and I look forward to engaging with you. And I appreciate you guys for watching this video. I'll see you guys all next time. Thanks, bye.